Ivan from Albania. I am on a holiday, but I didn't give up on you. So I'm welcoming you from nice little warm place with juice of orange juice. And today we are going to talk about money. Oh my God, it's the money. Oh, great. Guys, I'm glad you are joining me. So for those of you who are joining me, say hello and send me your little heart. I always like to see Zuzka, hi. Um, and yes, we are going to talk about money. It is a very interesting subject. I always say that talking about money is triggering people as much as talking about sex. Would you agree? <laughs> Martina, hi, Pete, hi, welcome guys. Nice to have you here. So let me, before we start talking about something, uh, I think it's quite a sensitive subject, something uh, that is, you know, we are talking about a lot, we are thinking about it a lot. You know, <clears throat> let's, let's, um, let me first uh, introduce myself and just say why, why we are doing what we are doing. I'm saying we, because normally it's Martin and I. Um, at the moment, technically, we are unfortunately not able to connect this week and next week, but after that, it's um, going to be always two of us. For me, my name is Lucia Hoxha. I am um, known as Queen of Yoga for love and connection, but I'm also um, known as um, someone who, uh, professionally qualified life coach I work with women and I am a firm stand for women to have the great life that, that they deserve that really um, all of us live the life in harmony um, balanced and in in tune with our um, ourselves with, with our soul um, just it, it's really like coming back home when we do that and everything else then aligns which is the beautiful feeling and I really want this for all of all women so guys for those of you who are watching thank you very much for finding a time to uh, to be with us I am streaming from the restaurant today so it might be like way to coming in and out and people passing by but you know this is the beauty of the Facebook live streaming I've got a beautiful view here just uh, just for a little moment as you can see behind me is a river um, I often do yoga for those of you who've been uh, watching my um, TV channel last year I've been launching it here in this restaurant um, last year it was very successful and um, yeah this is um, we, we often if you remember a year ago we often used to have a fisherman uh, that we've been uh, waving to every morning they woke up as early as me for yoga and you know they've been fishing and I was doing yoga which worked perfectly because they caught my fish and I could have a lunch afterwards which was well deserved so let's talk about what we talk about and I was really thinking about how to start this subject if I'm kind of looking this way guys it is because I have a few bullet points um, you know that are prepared here um, for uh, for us just to keep the little bit of structure although I really want this life uh, Facebook live being uh, interactive Adriana hello from Hamburg hello darling I was passing in Munich Munich about five six days ago so hello to Germany uh, I've got my nephew from Germany that's why <laughs> um, and yeah let's talk about money so guys you know I know it's a little bit like sensitive and so that's why I want to encourage you to kind of share let's make this dynamic let's let's make this um, let's make this real okay let's talk about what matters and you know if you ask me money does matter you know I I was brought up um, in, in the country where you know having you know I was brought up in communism and having a lot of money those days everybody was equal right we all have everything have everything and nobody really had nothing and there was like there were like few privileged women who've been uh, sorry few privileged people who been able to have kind of more than anyone else and you know they've been like frowned upon so um, you know I experienced growing in a society where uh, money never been an issue like we always um, we always had you know enough to oh, oh at least as a child you know I experienced that I never been craving that there was really nothing that I could have there'd be no mobile phones there'd been I, I didn't even have a leather jacket or jeans till I was about 10 I think I didn't even know what it is so I didn't really crave for anything because I didn't need anything so I think you know compared to these children these days I I grew up as a quite modest you know person what we didn't have an excess 
um, is uh, to learn about business, learn about value of money, learn about how to, you know, how to make money, how to, you know, be kind of uh, hi, Jarmilka, zdravim, uh, darling. Um, you know, how to, um, and you know, Jarmila and I, Jarmila is one of my, uh, my clients who worked with me previously, and we've we worked just about this, what I'm talking about. You know, how do we shift that, you know, mindset? So, you know, how do we um, earn the money in, in a way that it brings us joy, but also that we, you know, provide the value to people and we experience the joy in providing the value for people while, you know, uh, reaping the benefits and enjoying, you know, enjoying the benefits of earned money. You know, that, that, that was kind of concept where in my childhood that was absolutely, you know, unex you know un un it was non-existent, right? And, um, you know, kind of what, how it used to be like, and I think we've been talking in other Facebook Live about this. Thank you so much. Jacqueline and Falem Bears. I, I keep that one as well. <laughs> Thank you. I'm learning, guys, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I just absolutely enjoy the fruit and vegetables here, and I'm learning slowly, slowly Albanian. All I can say is about, um, you know, 25 words. Some, most of it is names of animals. So anyway. So that was my waiter. Um, but what I want to say is, yeah, that the concept of money was very different for me than it used to be when I was a child. And I, I kind of had to grow into um, starting, you know, loving money and seeing them as, as something exciting rather than as something dirty. And people with money and who has got like even a lot of money, you know, seeing them as a not a horrible bastards that you know made it in life or horrible bastards not even who made it in my bed that wouldn't be a problem but horrible people who you know earned the money on the you know okay we are back we are back <laughs> we are back so yeah someone who earned a lot of money was almost treated as a as a horrible disgusting person and actually it could have been someone really nice but you know we had this preconception uh, like that because it was that period of, of after communism but what I really want to talk about is that you know let's just start and have a look uh, Michael is saying, look at the color, color of you. I know, I've got a little bit of time. This is just one day on the sun. Can you believe it? But I think I'm coming in and out. But let's get back to money. Um, so how, you know, where money came from, you know? Money hasn't been here. It, it's a piece of paper. When you think about it, money is just a piece of paper. It's not a big deal. Like, why everybody is, like, what everybody's raving about, right? And, uh, you know, when we think about it, like back in the days, there used to be a tribes, they used to, you know, be together, they used to hunt together, they used to provide the food, gather the food together. Everybody's got the responsibilities, right? Like men used to chase the, the animals, women used to stay at home, look after children and make sure we, they keep the fire. Then we moved from that to, you know, just kind of like bartering. Bartering um, it means like exchanging the goods. So, you know, I was good in uh, making, I don't know, planting tomatoes and then someone else was, you know, uh, what was was a baker. So we exchanged uh, the goods. I think that was like really brilliant because everybody was doing kind of what, what you know, people been doing what they are good at. They normally inherited it from the generations who had been taught to do the same good thing through the generation. But then, you know, someone came up with the idea, like, hold on a minute, you know, uh, what I've got to offer, you know, is actually more valuable than what you have to offer. So how do we deal with it if it's so much more valuable that you can't give me two or three or five of those? It, it became difficult bartering for everything. So people came up with, you know, the, the precious... Um, the, the precious metals like like uh, gold and, and and so on and and that's how we started only then 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 later on later on we actually came up with something called money which is effectively you know piece of paper that we are conditioned to understand as a something that has a money because that's what society says that that works and it makes it easier to trade and it does make it easier to trade so this is a little bit of history about money 
Uh, what is interesting about money, and this is a question as well on you guys, is the perception and is the importance that we give to money. You know, I often wonder whether what people are really after is actually money or, or more money, yeah, having more on account, like earning more money, because that's what everybody is talking about, winning lottery, that kind of thing. Or whether people are actually after and what they are truly after is good quality of life. So let me know if you're watching guys what you are really after. Do you really want to have you know more money on your account? You know, or do you want to have more time for yourself? You know, do you want to spend uh, more time being places like where I am now? Like I'm very fortunate to be here for about one month. You know, and um, you know, is it the quality of life we are craving for, or is it is it actually money? You know, and and I like to you know challenge that, and I like us to you know actually have a look at it because that that is kind of good question to to give ourselves. Another, you know, keep keep those answers going. I'm I'm checking, guys, uh, what you are answering. Uh, Martina is saying both. <laughs> <laughs> both yeah and you know like it, it kind of goes hand in hand but Mati if you you know and maybe we can have it all absolutely like why not uh, you know but if you uh, okay let me give you a different question guys if you have a choice Adriana is saying quality of life thank you Adriana you know and let me let me question put a question this way like if you have um, you know a lot of you will be probably watching from London and living in London is let's face it is very intense you know and I know a lot of people who are very successful um, but they have absolute no time for nothing guys they have no time to enjoy money yes they go for a really nice holidays once a, once a year uh, but do they actually actually you know what about rest of the year you know what? What about what about daily life? You know how do you live? Do you have a time to eat, or do you eat on a on a on a tube on the way to work? You know, do you take a lunch break even, or do you feel the constant pressure that you need to perform, that you need to prove, that you need to catch up with <laughs> with work? You know, I mean that kind of thing. So so that's one side of things, and the other thing is, you know, would we consider earning much less? and possibly living in a country where the, the, the expenses are much, much lower, uh, you know, and maybe uh, life is not luxurious, but hey, you know, you have everything what you, what you need and you can afford everything what, what you know, what you cra crave for, like the, your ba basic needs are fulfilled and you have like good life. You know, I, I've um, spent some time with my friend um, I read your messages in a moment. I spent some time with my friend the other day in Slovakia, and she's got a boy from, you know, men from New Zealand. She's a lovely lady. She's also a yoga teacher. She does some work from home. Her husband teaches, and they both uh, came back living in my uh, lovely little town ne near mountains in Brezno, in Slovakia. And I had a conversation with her. She lived all over the world, you know, for for many years, including London. And, you know, she said to me, you know, Lucia, since our son was born for five years, we actually lived here and, you know, we are happy. We are happy. Like, yes, we did, couldn't afford, a, you know, luxurious holidays or even any holidays abroad for the last five years. But frankly, we didn't need it. My husband comes back home like at three o'clock. My clients, I arrange. So we are kind of done by three o'clock. And then we sit on the bikes and we go hiking, cycling. Um, or, you know, my husband likes climbing. I do the yoga in the mountains. It's 10 minutes walk. You know, I, I really don't even need the holidays because every day seemed to me like a holiday. And, you know, I was thinking, and she, she did look rested and, you know, and it, it wasn't like, you know, in London you say, where shall we meet? And we have to schedule and reschedule and it takes about three months till we finally meet our friends. You know, I sent her message and she said, yeah, sure, like, you know, I come down at, you know, whatever, give me a time and I meet you on the square because it was five minute walk, you know. And, and this is like, do it, I mean, maybe what we are after is actually easy life, you know. I don't know about you guys, this is like open question. Um, 
let me read your uh, messages. So, Yarmila is saying good quality of life all the way, free of guilt to buy something higher price range but more expensive. Well, this is it. So, so it's really about a freedom to make a financial choices for yourself and expect, uh, you know, how much you ex um, uh, money you spend. Martina is saying we can have more money and more time, but we need to stop trading time for money. Absolutely, Martina. And there are several ways that that we can definitely do this. You know, one thing that I love about traveling the world, and I've been very fortunate to see. No, obviously. Not but I've been fortunate to see quite a bit. What fascinates me is the different kind of lifestyles that people have. You know, different kind of ways people live, different kind of ways people earn money. You know, it is fantastic and, and I love it. And I'm so passionate about more and more women coming up to me saying, I want to reconnect with my passions. You know, I don't just want to do a dead end job like nine to five and you know, I just really want to look at my life and, and, and live every day like filled with uh, aliveness, like leaving something behind, you know. Um, I always celebrate with my clients and, you know, inside and even with my husband, like I, I kind of, I, I cannot like not say it because I'm so happy for them when they have their breakthroughs. And, um, you know, and I often attract women who are either looking for uh, a purpose in life, you know, they're in that, those beginning stages of life when they are, well, not of life, but of discovering what works for me, what I want to put my energy in, how do I want to, uh, you know, live my life, what, what fills me up, what gives me joy, what lights me up. You know, what makes me happy? What do I want to do, even if I don't get paid for it? And that's how you choose your business. That's, that's what you, you know, and then, you know, I've got a women who are coming up to me, Lucia, I know what to do, but I don't know how the hell to make money out of it, you know? And that's when we start working together. And it really is a lot about mindset and a lot about, you know, thinking about what kind of lifestyle do I want to uh, live? What, how much money do I need to um, earn to firstly cover my bills, expenses, you know, be rational about it, put things down on the paper. A lot of businesses, you know, a lot of people are doing business, but they are actually not doing the maths, you know, like if you ask them how much profit they made at the end of the month, they can't give you a number, you know, and, and this is this is the basic things that might be obvious, but actually that's how uh, a lot of businesses are failing or, you know, don't make it through the first two years. Um, so, Martina is saying, let me read your comments, m more of your comments. Uh, Yanmila is saying higher quality, but more expensive. Uh, okay, yeah, Martina is saying amazing, so thank you, Martinka. Yeah, I mean, Ma Tatiana is saying, to me, money is a great tool that uh, not only able to provide freedom and time and financial freedom, um, it creates the space and for things I have calling to do. And I know, Tatiana, you are someone who is doing uh, business and you do it with a lot of passion so you know you are you're already well on your way to you know have a life uh, filled with success um, because y you are living that journey you are on that journey and you're doing very well so um, yeah let's talk a little bit about you know perception of money you know what is too little what is too much you know what do you think about it guys how much money would you actually have to have to feel like, or have to earn, you know, on a monthly basis to feel like, okay, I'm sorted. You know, I can now have everything what I want and I feel not guilty to pay for this or pay for that and I have absolute freedom to, you know, to choose or buy anything I want to have the kind of lifestyle I want. Someone uh, said to me actually other day, well, no, it was a few months ago, that when you reach a certain amount of earnings per, per year, let's just talk about per year for now, um, it's something like benchmark maybe 50 or 60,000 uh, pounds. When you reach that kind of thing, then quality of your, li your life, it's just really, it doesn't really, uh, is not that much. Uh, difference in quality of life because you can only buy as much right like on day-to-day -day basis you can only eat as much you can only spend as much the rest of it would be a little bit of a waste and actually it can tip up other way 
other way around. Um, you know, but that's that's just something. You know, we are. I'm not saying what I'm saying is the truth. Is is more like you know we are just playing here, like right? What is too much? What is too little? Um, Martina is saying, love this quote. If the money did not exist, would you still get up every morning and do what you do for a living? It's perfect, Martina. This is exactly what it is. And frankly, hand on my heart, you know, I still would do it. Actually, tell a lie. Now I'm on holiday and I'm not doing much. You know, I'm, I'm, I kept my clients that I have because it's very important to keep the momentum going. But I'm actually not doing much and I'm feeling more I'm here. I'm feeling more and more lazy. But it's not because I don't, don't love my job. It is because everything what you do, it's healthy to have a break and just kind of let go. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to do even more of that after this live streaming. Tatiana is saying, I'm, I'm on that journey for, for years, love my career, but it caps um, my full potential. Every experience is important, absolutely, you know, absolutely. And, and we do, we, we do want to do on everyday basis, ideally, something that doesn't feel like work. You know, we, we do want to learn, we do want to progress, we don't do want to be challenged. We don't want to be like, Ugh, you know, when I'm going to pay my next bill and how. Uh, but we do want to be challenged in a sense like, okay, I've never done this before, uh, how can I go about it? We don't want to be too challenged. It's good to be out of comfort zone, but not too much because it can put us off from you know, going forward completely. Uh, Samira is saying uh, in Slovak language, so you say nigdy není dos, which means there is never enough money. And this is really great that you are bringing it up, um, Samira, because you know, it, it feels like it. It can occur like that, right? It can occur like there is never enough money. And then, but the, the risky thing, if we do have a, this perception and if this perception is kind of um, engraved in us quite strongly, there is a little uh, risk, I would say, or risk. There, yeah, I mean, I would call it risk that um, we spend our life not living fully. We're spending our life living one day, someday, when I have that kind of money or when I get that house, when I earn that thing or when I, you know, when kids are out of the school and I don't have to pay their school fees. You know, we are living in a one day, someday world. And, you know, although we need to join head with the heart right we need to be sensible reasonable it's not like I'm saying to people you know yeah go for it if you don't have no money no job spend three thousand pounds going traveling around the world or ten thousand um, pounds I'm not saying that what I'm saying is uh, actually you know it's really interesting perception of money like some people can have very little money but actually they're not worried, they don't have anxious feeling like, you know, how I'm going to pay my bills. They, they know that, you know, they have enough and they always will have just because they have, you know, trust in themselves and they are taking actions and they know that no matter what happens, they're capable, they're healthy as long. My husband is really good, you know, he says, baby, as long as we are healthy, you know, I never ask God for money. I never ask God for anything else other than health, you know, and I really like that because how many of us got like really good savings, you know, I know people who, who got like, you know, really quite solid savings, maybe 100, 200 grand on a, on account, which is, you know, I consider as a really nice backup money. Um, and, you know, but they don't feel like they have enough, they wouldn't spend you know, there are some people who got this kind of money, but they wouldn't spend thousand, two thousand pounds on a holiday. It really is the truth because, you know, God knows what, something happened in the past and, you know, they got scared that one day they won't have enough money to, to live, that they will go back to that place. And I want to say that I, I can associate with that because... Uh, I share a little bit of um, you know true story about myself uh, that actually I got a question like this from one of my potential clients today and um, and I'm really glad she asked because uh, she asked me you know have you ever been in a situation where you didn't um, where you didn't have enough money to eat yeah 
and that was really interesting. She, you know, she said, uh, she asked me this question, and there was probably a reason why she was asking me this question. I didn't test it, but I shared with her because hopefully it contributed to her. And uh, yes, there was a situation. It's not that I was starving. I never got to the point like of starvation because that's when you actually have a cramps. So that's when you have a pain in your stomach. So I never got there. But there was about a year of my life. Uh, there was more, more than a decade ago now, where you know where I found it extremely difficult to find the money to to get a food. You know, and, and like basic food, I'm talking about bread and, you know, it was pretty much like bread and hot dogs. And, and I still have a memory on that now. I kind of smile about it. But, you know, it, if I have a, had a mustard, that was like really good. Um, when I had a ketchup, that was like really exciting because I had a new taste. Every day, like it was like one hot dog, a little bit of bread and, and that was it. And guys, I was working. I had a good job. I uh, was doing, but to be able to afford, uh, because of my expenses, I was getting going through divorce at the time. I was paying mortgage, I was paying my own accommodation that was very expensive. I was paying for solicitors simply at the end of, and you know, there was a period of my life where I had to leave, even though I was paying mortgage, I had to leave my own house. And you know, and uh, it was really scary. You know, at the beginning, it was very scary because I had nowhere to live, you know. Then uh, one of my friends took me on her mom's sofa and I was staying there over Christmas and then eventually, eventually, well, then I got sick and then eventually when I got a little bit better, I, I was finding my own feet, finding uh, accommodation for myself and slowly, slowly I was getting better. But I did have to, for about a year, work weekends doing the leafleting jobs in the rainy, cold London just to earn enough money that, that weekend jobs, that was my... Um, you know what, what it was that those days it was so long time ago is something like seven pounds an hour and, and that money I earned on the weekend um, that was the money that I bought the food from for, for the whole week you know so yes absolutely you know no doubt money is very important and to be honest with you I'm sharing this story with you because when I got over that hurdle um, and over that period you know, it, it didn't last forever, it was about a year, but ever since I, you know, deep inside, it was so hard that deep inside I said to myself, never again, I will, you know, get into that kind of situation, you know, and never again I want to be back in, in that kind of place. And, you know, then later on when I had actually a lot of money, like, you know, good, good money when I, uh, you know, been completely fine, and I could afford things, I was always thinking, no, 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 I have to hurt, I have to hurt, or I have to be safe, I have to be, you know, it was about being safe, really. So, and I'm sharing this, guys, because, you know, have a look, have a look if something happened in your life in the past where your perception of money is stopping you from spending money on things that you actually do value, you know, because, um, I'm not talking about you know buying a new shoes, but things that can really, really make you make a difference for you. Whether it's coaching, whether it's personal development, for me personally, education, right? That kind of things or traveling, that kind of things, I I would spend every single penny on because it is investment in your life, in yourself, in your future, in your education, in 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 experience of life you know I don't regret one penny and I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds in my education in programs um, you know I, I you know all over the world so so what I want to say is that have a look if your experience something that happened in the past and you, you know a long time ago maybe it was divorce of your parents who knows you know maybe it was something that um, uh, you know, normally, like divorce of the parents, it's, it's got a big financial impact. Normally, kids stay with mom. I had a client who I've been coaching on this, like shifting that per perception of, you know, the scarcity about money. Because when we are scared about not having enough, we are not opening the channel to attract more money into our lives. Not many people know that in order to earn more money or or earn good money, you know, to, we need to, money is like energy. We need to keep them flowing. We need to. It's like a river, a 
I've got a river here. Actually, this river doesn't flow very well, like the one in Slovakia. But, you know, it is really like a flow. If we don't spend, if we are holding on to something, and it doesn't have to be money, it can be relationship. You know, guys, if we are clinging on to something, whether it's money or relationship, um, there is no flow, there is no energy, there is no freedom. And I just really want to say that because it's so important. It's not only about, you know, making money and hurdling and being safe. It's about feeling content and confident enough that once you made that kind of money, you know, you can make them again. You know, it, it, it is, I, I tell you something like, you know, even I had a moment and I still have them. I still work on myself, you know even being successful and my business going well, you know, I had those moments, even when I'm on a holiday, I'm thinking, okay, when I slow down now, can I afford that? Like, can I actually, you know, not to be out there so much, not to produce, not to create so much, it, it can, can my business hold that? Is that, you know, like there was a moment like that and then I was thinking, oh, come on, don't be silly, you know, Lucia, you just have to, you just need to give yourself permission to kind of let go and trust, you know? Uh, so yeah really it is about that scarcity relationship about with money is the most oh my god it's just so interesting you know what I had a friend um, I'm not going to name my friend he was a male friend and uh, you know we done a money seminar together I was coaching on a money seminar those days and uh, you know he was in my group and it was hilarious guys we laughed because uh, he discovered okay that He's really like, he, he said, Lucia, I have no problem to earn a lot of money. Now he's in politics, but before he was doing all sorts of projects. And he, he was a musician and stuff. And he said, I have no problem to earn a lot of money. But you know what? I make like, even like 200,000 pounds within a couple of weeks. But I never keep them. I always lose them. It's like incredible. They always like either there is a bank fraud, like they disappear from my bank account. Or, you know, I, I earned like quite a lot of money and, and actually I put them ca cash in my pocket and I was like cycling because he's got a little son, he likes to cycle and little one enjoys it and he's like, I was cycling home and by the time I got home, you know, they drop out of my pocket. Like, it's just like the universe is like telling me that, okay, have it, you can earn it, but you can't keep it. And every single time he earned money, he, he discovered this pattern. And I was like, wow, you know. And then we worked on it. We worked together and we had a call. And it was, guys, it was so powerful. It was the moment where he discovered like, wow. It was like a light bulb. It was like a striking. And what he realized, what he discovered is that, um, you know, when he was little, his, you know, his parents didn't have very good relationship and, they, they didn't get divorced, but they didn't live together. And um, eventually father got fed up and left, so it was just him and mom. He wanted to stay with father. He got stuck with mom, who, you know, who was like busy. She, she was not like, she says, mother material as such. But, you know, she, she used to buy his love. You know, and, one, and he was petrified that mom is going to leave as well. And one day, you know, as a little child, I don't know, he was a five or something like that. You know, mom, um, you know, said that, you know, she's leaving and she's not going to be back. She had someone else for a week and he was stuck with the grandmother. And But she gave him a money, you see. Like, they've been fairly well off, but she gave him a money. And in that moment, he, you know, he, he got really angry as a child. And, you know, he, he bashed her hand and he declined the money. And in that moment, guys, when he remembered this story, it was pretty amazing because he kind of went, wow, you know, this is the pattern that I have from when I was five years old, you know. It was the case of my mother who, you know, I was missing her love and she gave me a money and I didn't want a money because what I really wanted was love from my mother as a child, you know, and, and that's amazing. He now says that he's incapable to keep the money because he does, he's got this um, toxic relationship with money because it was replacement for love, you know. And, and now, you know, once he discovered that, it was like a blind spot, you know, he didn't see it, then suddenly he saw it. 
and from that moment he's like Lucia you know this is so amazing because now I can really you know I, I'm not five years old again and I can really make some uh, powerful decisions for myself now I'm aware of this you know I can really shift shift things around and he did you know he did he is very successful and in South London he's uh, he's, he's doing some incredible things that is uh, about communities and supporting uh, people doing some amazing projects and as a natural outcome he, he's getting really well paid for it um, so yeah let me know what you think guys let me read some of your more of your comments what you are saying here we've got a few more minutes so slowly slowly we will be wrapping up Sue is saying money is not important health is absolutely like I think like no money in the world you know I mean, yes, you can get a better health care, but I'd rather not get to that point when I need that kind of health care. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, health first, uh, money. Bona, hi, I need to come and see you, my darling. You're not far from me. So, yeah, thank you very much for your com comments, guys. It, you, are, you are sending uh, more. I don't think I will have um, uh, time to, to read them all. Um, what... So coming back you know coming back to money just so we can we can kind of wrap it up is um uh, other day i i, I heard a, like great quote and you were saying that actually you know there's two thousand two hundred fifty ways how to um how to wash the dishes okay and what i was thinking wow you know if there's 250 ways how to wash dishes surely they have to be a lot of ways how to earn money as well and that's kind of you know what one of the things that i want to leave you with guys you know just um to kind of pause and to kind of have a little thought like hmm, you know what do i like you know how how can i be creative about maybe have a multiple income stream maybe you know maybe have a part-time you know have a courage and you know being real with myself like how much money do i actually need and you know rather than hurdling and saving up on a saving account if you're in position like that how about you know going and have a part-time job and then the rest of the time, you know, investing wisely in my education, in my development, in discovering what I really want to do in life, hiring the coach, someone like me or, or anybody else or doing the program that is going to serve you and, you know, rediscovering yourself, come back to myself. You know, t life is really, really short and I think one of the main reasons why I'm dri you know, driven to do what I do is that, you know, I myself want to live this life fulfilled i want to see beautiful places i want to meet great people i want to feel like i want to breathe freely i want to enjoy moment i want to notice little things like i've got a baby coming into the restaurant and i'm fascinated by them i'm totally connecting with ourselves these days you know i want to feel you know I want to smell the sea. I don't just want to go for a holiday, you know, to, for the sake of a holiday. You know, we can have a holidays and we can spend it all sorts of ways. But it really is about experience of life, giving myself that space where I can do this. You know, I know when I had a 9 to 5 job before, I was not able to do that. Like, that, that I had to like literally steal the time just to get enough sleep. And maybe it's not the way maybe it's okay for you maybe you are you've got a jobs that you absolutely are but maybe maybe there is another way and you know so i hope that this video is opening up something um something new for you something that maybe you didn't consider before if you have guys any questions you know i'm here a lot of times after these live streamings um, you know, maybe you don't have a confidence to send me uh, questions on here, and that's fine. I totally get that, guys. And thank you so much for all the comments that you are sending me in personal messages later, later on. Um, I'm trying to respond them all and uh, trying to be there for you as as um, as much as I can to to kind of support you in that journey of yours. Um, my stand for all of us is, guys, to. Um, money not being um, a scarcity issue. My stand for all of us is money being a tool and, and, and something very exciting, something we can celebrate, something that we can enjoy, we can share with others, we can make with joy and together rather than you know striving on our own. 
thinking that there is not enough. I personally think there is enough money, enough clients, enough resources for everyone. Everyone who is willing to, you know, to maybe have a little bit of courage and, and, and try, you know. So, um, and, and that, that actually, maybe I should mention that if you are feeling that um, you are in that stage of your life where you're like, okay, I'm not fulfilled, this is it, I'm like really struggling here. Um, and, and I'm feeling a little bit dead. That's how I felt, guys. I felt a little bit dead um, in my dead-end jobs, um, even though it, they've been very well paid and I, I learned a lot and I liked people there. But the, the bottom line it was that I came back home in the evening and I felt nothing. I was like, what did I do today? I just like reply, like a hamster, you know, like I was replying a lot of emails and, and trying to chase and chase and chase. And my only fulfillment, if you can call it fulfillment those days was, did I clear up my inbox to the degree that I can sleep without anxiety? Seriously, that was, you know, for 18 years or something like that, uh, on and off, on and off. Uh, you know, that was my main, you know, is, am I on the top of the things or am I drowning and I'm like up till there. Um, you know, I didn't even consider about like, am I happy or not? I had no time for that. So hopefully when you found the time to spend even five minutes, even to hear like two minutes of this uh, video, um, you know, that, that would be fantastic. And, and then, yes, it is about balance. It is about, you know, about... Uh, having harmony in all areas of our lives like one of the things one of the tools that I'm using during my coaching sessions and what I start with is a wheel of life where we look holistically holistically means whole and um, in all areas of your life because you know with my clients I don't want them just to be rich or just to be uh, you know uh, just to have a good relationships even though relationships are really important in terms of like how you feel inside and happiness in life but I want them to be healthy to have a balance to, to have a spirituality to you know like to have a rest to have a fun in life to uh, earn enough money to do what they are passionate about I'm just trying to picture the whole wheel of life you know there are a lot of aspects that make us to feel happy and fulfilled in life can we all have it all at all times Abs you know i don't want to say absolutely not but it's pretty challenging to have it perfect all the time it, I, I don't think it's possible frankly i don't have it hands up you know it's ongoing thing every day you know i'm just trying to you know be guided by my intuition and my gut feeling and i'm listening to my body which i'm proud about now these days that you know if i feel like um Sometimes, guys, these days when I'm really, really tired, I'm trying to fulfill on my biggest commitments. But when I'm feeling really, really tired, I just sleep, you know. And, and if that's what, how I feel sometimes for two days, because I had a really big event or very, you know, big run up to uh, something uh, that was happening in my life, or a lot of clients that, you know, it takes a lot of energy. And because I, I love them but I work energetically with them you know then I need a rest and I listen to my body and I sleep you know and um, and that's okay so yeah so much more to talk to you about but anyway thank you so much we are 45 minutes is up now um, there is so much more that I can you know I can um, I can mention so uh, you know I'm just looking here at my list I didn't even scratch the service surface about like what I actually wanted to share with you but it's okay what we were supposed to talk about we talked about I sending you lots of love from this beautiful warm place um, in South uh, Europe if you ever have a chance to visit Albania please come over not all of you because it will be too many tourists but <laughs> I probably shouldn't do much advertising because this is really still a, a very nice pure place food and lovely people so if you ever have a chance come over um, and let me know when you are here because I'm spending more and more time here because I love it um, and yeah for the rest of you if you want I will be doing a, a fantastic interview with an amazing guy called Neil this Friday evening yes it will be Friday evening um, so it will be yeah I think seven o'clock uh, UK time have a look watch it or watch it on a replay otherwise I will uh, be online live again God knows where I will be 
uh, live streaming. I will do my best to find the Wi-Fi next Wednesday again, and we will be again choosing the subject that is appealing for us all. Please keep on sending me your messages. Keep on sending me your um, suggestions about what would you like to talk about, what is interesting for you, what subject, what area of your life, um, whether here on the, on the live streaming chat or in the, in the personal message. I will do my best to put it on the list and in some point we will be talking about that, that subject for sure. Thank you so much guys, lots of love and uh, yeah, let's enjoy a holiday in case you're on a holiday and in case you're not, have a good time anyway because really it's, it's, it's inside us we can create that sunshine wherever we are.